fact that quantum computers always do everything in one step. Here's the problem which needs some more, even from a quantum computer. Now we have a function here. which maps n bits to n bits. And this function has this strange period. In, it's like a period in Z modulo 2. So it is some number A, for which holds this uh, property. If we add this number A, or uh, if we XOR some input with this number A, then we don't change the function value. And the function's value are equal only if the inputs meet this equality. OK, the problem is to find A. And if the function is implemented again as a black box, as an oracle, then the problem is really hard. And the complexity of this problem is not, um, in fact, obvious, because um, First of all, we need enough memory to store the function values. And with big n's, like if we have n, for example, 1000, then we need to store this number of values of this function. And this might not be possible. So uh, this problem easily becomes intractable. But even if we do have enough memory to solve this problem, we will need approximately this number of function queries in the worst case to finally find the values find the inputs for which the function values would be equal. So all this sounds too sad, so let's quickly proceed to the quantum case. So here's the Simons algorithm. Let's apply it and then talk. So we have n zeros and zeros here, and we have Adamar only on the this first n zeros. So it's one divided by two and divided by two x from 0 to, to n minus 1. So here's our formula for the Adamar transform. x and 0 stays here in this register. And then we apply quantum oracle, which is really simple here in this case. So again, this sum. x and f of x. And now we have a quantum state which holds all the values of the function f in it. Isn't that amazing? We just uh, discussed that for a classical case, this number of, bit, of bits makes the problem intractable. But we can easily imagine this number of qubits. And the system with this number of qubits can easily store uh, all the function values inside of its state. This is where the computing powers, uh, power of quantum computers come from. OK, and we are now ready to perform this measurement. Uh, honestly, we don't need this measurement step here. We do it for the sake of clarity. And if we measure this output register, we will get only one function value in it, like f of sum x0. And in this register, we will have two values corresponding to this value f of x, x0 itself, plus x0 
plus a. So this is what we will have in the input register. And of course, the coefficient. Now, this is our system state after this measurement of the value register. OK, now we have this value in our system state, and we need to apply a Damar transform to this. Let's do it. So it is going to be this. Again, we use this uh, formula for Adamar transform. And this one here, x, y. Plus again over all y's minus one and this value here x y plus a y and y again. And I'm going to combine these two sums in one. And I will have minus one x y plus minus one x y or a y and the vector y. Okay, uh, let's take a look at this. If this a uh, thick dot y not equals to zero, then these minus ones will have different powers and they will self uh, destroy, self destruct. Uh, so, uh, in this sum, stays, uh, stay only y's, such as a thick dot y equals to zero. And if we measure this sum after this Adamar transform, we will get one of these y's, the, y, uh, the y's which satisfy this condition. And this looks like um, an equation to solve. Um, and we need uh, n linearly independent of these y's to obtain the wall, the complete value of this a. So we will need to run this algorithm, this circuit scheme, this number of times. And if uh, we are not lucky, maybe an infinity of times, of course. OK, so uh, this circuit, this scheme, um, gives us this complexity for the quantum case. So we have learned several quantum algorithms, and now we can reflect a little on what we already know. First, we know that all these quantum algorithms employ the so-called quantum parallelism, which allows us to fit all the uh, possible inputs to the oracle in uh, just one time, just one step. This fact alone can be very exciting because a very small quantum system can store data and handle data which the whole classical universe cannot accommodate. This is very hard to explain without this um, multiverse explanation of quantum mechanics. Second, uh, these quantum algorithms employ entanglement, which is uh, really 
impossible to implement in the classical systems and uh, hard to implement in uh, quantum system systems. Uh, but this entanglement is very important for obtaining uh, some function of properties later after the measurement. Because during the process of computation, we need to magnify the amplitudes of some vectors, of one vector, and to decrease the amplitudes of another vector, to increase the probability for one vector to be measured, and decrease the probabilities of other vectors to be measured. And these vectors to be magnified and decreased, uh, uh, they depend on the function of interest, which is stored inside this uh, quantum system. So the system has to decide itself which vectors to magnify and which vectors to decrease. And after, which, after all this we get, we perform measurement and measure those vectors which amplitudes were magnified. Here on the slide you can see the screenshot of uh, the simulator of quantum computer um, implemented by my student Yuri Konoplev. And here I believe it is a Deutsch Joza problem for the parity function. And you can um, find this simulator on the internet on the link which is on the slide. And you can try, you can uh, look at the examples of the algorithms and you can design your own algorithms. Uh, this simulator allows up to 24 qubits. Uh, now, uh, with, with all this background, we can approach the real and useful algorithms which we will do in the following two weeks. Now, good luck with your modular test, and I hope to see you next week. Bye.